Discord. And um, I did want to tell you guys, I don't know if you ever look at the YouTube channel for, um, you know, lessons and things like that, because I usually post um, like all of my lessons and things on there. But um, yesterday I somehow locked myself out of it and um, I logged out and I don't know how. And um, I don't know the password to get back in. So I'm waiting for somebody to um, email me the username and the password and stuff. I don't even know how I did it, but I did. So um, yeah, but I will, let me think. Yeah, everything from last week is up, but yesterday isn't up and obviously today. So I'm working on that. I don't even know if you guys look at it, but if not, that's okay. So um, what we're gonna do for today, um, I don't really feel that good. So um, we're just gonna kind of do um, some easy stuff today. Um, we'll review the present tense verb endings, which you guys know them. Um, review the new ER and IR vocabulary, which um, we did yesterday. Uh, we'll also review the two verb constructions, which um, that's kind of, I'm trying to think. I think that's kind of what the homework is on, I think, but that's pretty easy, so we'll go over that. Um, I'll start going over to Nair plus K plus infinitive and like what that is. It looks kind of like a little hard, but it's really not. You'll see what I mean. And to Nair is a verb. So we'll go over the conjug conjugations of that because it is an irregular one, but obviously um, in order to use this formula, you have to know, you know how, to, how to use Tenere or else it doesn't make sense. Um, and if we get time and if you guys feel like you need it, I did add in um, a section and uh, like an online quiz. It's not, well, just for practice for uh, like the, the conjugating verbs. So if you guys feel like you need it and we have time, I have um, something there because I remembered what you said yesterday. And then um, I'll go over the instructions for what you have to do. Um, like I said, I think it's on two verb constructions, but I have to take another look at it. Again, I did it last night, so. Um, but just to go over um, the AR present tense verb endings. So remember we take the AR, ER, IR ending off and then we're left with the stem. And then um, you add these endings onto the end. And obviously um, the uh, personal pronouns are all the same. You guys are okay with them, right? You know, like what yo to el eao said, you like, you know what that stuff means. You're okay with that. I wanted to make sure. Yeah. Okay, good, just wanted to make sure. So um, remember in the yo form, you add an O to the end of the stem. And that's the same for AR, ER, and IR, that it's universal across all three. Um, in the to form, you add an AS. In the L, A, Ya, and Usted form, you add an A. In the nosotros or the nosotras form, you add amos. Um, in the ellos, ellas, and ustedes form, you add an on to the stem, A-N. So that's nothing new. Um, for ER verbs, um, you in the obviously the pronouns are the same. They always are. In the yo form, you add an O to the end of the stem, just like all the other verbs. Uh, in the to form, you add an ES. Um, in the el, ella, and usted form, you add an E. In the nosotros and the nosotras form, you add emos, E M O S. Um, and in the ellos, uh, ellas, and ustedes form, you add an E N. So you can see like this is kind almost the same as the AR verbs, just in the ER, it's an E instead of an A. So easy enough. And I'm just going over all these again because they're like one of the most important things that you're gonna learn in Spanish. So um, it's good to remember them. For um, the IR present tense um, endings, just remember that they're all the same as the ER ones, except in the no nosotros form. So for the yo, you add an o, which we know that it's the same for all of them. In the to form, you add an es, just like the er verbs. In the el, ella, and usted form, you add an e, just like you do um, with the er verbs. Um, in the nosotros and the nosotras form, it's form you add emos, which is i m o s, which that's the only one that's different from er verbs. And then um, ellos, ellas, and ustedes, you add an en, just like you do uh, with er verbs. So uh, we went through them. And like I said, um, if you feel like you need it, I do have some practice and stuff on that. And then uh, we went over the AR um, regular verb vocabulary pretty much. 
So uh, today I'm just going to do uh, the ER and the IR. So, and these are all regular verbs. None of these are going to get funny or change on you or anything, at least in the present tense. So, um, so comer is to eat, beber is to drink, leer is to read, vender is to sell, correr is to run, aprender is to learn, creer is to believe, de bear is to, to should or to must like do something. Um, like if I would say like debo comer, that means like I should eat. Um, and that's, it's kind of an awkward definition, but that's literally what it means. Um, a breer is to open, escri beer is to write, vivir is to live, recibir is to receive, compartir is to share, asistir a is like to attend to, so just asistir is to attend. So do you have any questions or anything on the vocab, you okay? Yeah, we've been going over those a couple of days, so I figured we were kind of okay. So um, I figured that we would keep going with um, just to uh, review the two verb constructions, which we did yesterday. And I think that's what the homework's on. So um, sometimes in Spanish, you'll have two verbs that are right next to each other in the same phrase, like, um, like I need to eat or um, like, obviously the examples are here. I need to go, I need to sleep. You like to read. So to need, and to like are verbs, obviously, because they're something that you do. Um, and so are to go, to sleep, and to read. So you see, I need and to go, two verbs right next to each other. So um, when you're in the situation, the first verb in the phrase will be conjugated. The second one will remain in its infinitive form. So you leave that one um, in, you know, when, when it ends in A-R, E-R, or I-R. So um, if the verbs aren't right next to each other in the sentence, conjugate both of them. So, um, excuse me, but an example is um, mi esposo trabaja y cocina. And that means my husband works and cooks. And you see there's an, an um, e means and, so you can see that the two verbs are separated. So they were not right next to each other. So they conjugated both of them. And uh, right here, it says these, these verbs aren't directly next to each other. So they're both conjugated. So um, like an example is um, when you say, I need to go, you would say necesito ir. And necesito is conjugated, but ir isn't. And um, I need to sleep is necesito dormir. So um, necesito is conjugated. Dormir is an IR verb, so it's still in its IR form. And um, you like to read. So te gusta leer. So um, gusta is conjugated. Gustar is a weird verb, like we went over. But um, it is conjugated. And leer is to read. And that's an ER verb. So it's in its infinitive form. So this stuff is kind of easy. Um, did you guys want to do, I don't think I have any in here. Yeah. Did you guys want to do um, like some practice with this or do you think you're okay with it? Um, we did some of it yesterday, but if you think that you need more help, we can do some work on it now. Wasn't sure how you guys were feeling about it. Right now I'm just finishing up the work I have to finish. Okay. <laughs> Bless you if you just sneezed. I think that's what that was. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, and then, um, and then I do some practice with this. This is like um, a different, um, a different way to say things. So um, it's formally known as tener plus k plus infinitive. So it's a verb plus k plus like in a, a verb and it's infinitive. So sounds really odd, but this is just a fancy construction of how to say to have to do something. So tener means to have. Right, and we haven't done that one yet because it's an irregular verb, but we're gonna go through it today. So um, we'll go over the conjugations on the next slide, but some examples are, I have to eat. So that would translate to tango means I have, que comer. I have to eat, and they put the K in there for some reason. I don't know why, but they do. 
And um, another example is tu tienes que dormir. So that means you have, which is tu tienes to sleep, dormir. Tu tienes que dormir. So there's that. And in these constructions, tener is always conjugated, the first verb. And the verbs are separated by the word que, right? So obviously the last verb, the thing that you have to do is in the infinitive form. And the formula makes that easy to remember because it literally says infinitive. So you conjugate tener based on who has to do the thing, put in K and then put the infinitive in. Uh, and yeah, so then this will go over the conjugations of tener and then I have some practice so we can work on that together. So um, tener is an ER verb, obviously it ends in an ER. It's an irregular verb. Uh, that's why I haven't really gone over it yet. Um, the stem changes. So like you take the ER off and you're left with T-E-N and that stem will change before you add the endings on. So the stem changes, but the endings are the same, the same ones that we've been going over. There's like a whole section on stem changing verbs, but we're gonna start here for now. And uh, they can be a bit overwhelming, but you have to know how to conjugate tener in order to use tener plus k plus infinitive. So you can see, this is the chart. The personal pronouns are the same. So you still have I, you, he, she, you formal, we, they, and you guys. So that never changes. They're always gonna be the same. So um, in the yo form, it's yo tengo, which means I have. I actually wanted to add that in there now that I think about it. Uh, for this next one, it's tu tienes, which is you have, right? For the next one, it's el, ella, usted tiene. So it's he, she, you have, or he, she has, same thing. Um, for the nosotros form, it's nosotros o nosotras tenemos. So that's we have. And then um, ellos, ellas, what have I done? Okay. So, and then it's ellos, ellas, ustedes tienen. So that will be they or like y'all have. Okay. So you see how like the endings are the same. We still have the O, the ES, the E, the Amos and the en, but like the stem changes. There's a lot of verbs like that. Um, and the stem, just as a fun fact, the stem never changes in the no socialist form. You can see that one's the same, but we'll go over all that later. I just want to make sure that you had these because we're gonna do some practice with them on the next slide. So, uh, so this is practice with it. And these are just really simple sentences, but um, this is just kind of to get you familiar with them. So I'll put the answers down here. So um, if it's in English, you want to translate it to Spanish. And if it's in Spanish, you want to translate it to English. So if we have for the first one, we have Alberto tiene que dormir. Does anybody, do you guys want to, does either one of you want to tell me what that would translate to in English? Remember, tener plus K plus infinitive. Say it again. For, uh, yeah, the first one, I have Alberto tiene que dormir. What would that translate to in English? What do you think? Remember? Hey, Alberto needs to sleep. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, why is this not letting me write? Okay. So the next one you would have to put in Spanish. It says, we have to eat. How would we say that? You say we have to eat. No, so for me. Yep, remember it would be, uh, well, yeah, you could use that. Necesitamos is correct. That is completely right. But if we're using tener, it would be nosotros tenemos que comer. And you see right here, the nosotros is tenemos. So, yeah. but, def but definitely if you don't like, like this is just an option. If you don't, for some reason, like this form, you can use um, necesitar. That means to need to. So 
either one is correct. So uh, for number three, it says they have to rest. So what do you think? How would you say that? So obviously it would be ellos. You say they need to rest? Yes. Yep. Ellos necesitan a dormir. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that would be completely fine. Necesitan is correct. It would be dormir or descansar. Either okay. one. Either one is right. Uh, dormir more means to sleep. Descansar is more to like rest or take a break, but um, they're both right. And then uh, for the next one, I have yo tengo que beber. What would that mean in English? I need a drink. Yep. And then for the next one, it would say, you need to open the door. And I have the word for the door because we don't need that. Necesita abrir la puerta. Mm -hmm. Two. So for the work, right, what's V-O-S-O-T-R-O-S? -O -O oh, Vosotros? Yeah. Which one, which assignment are you on? Mm, um, I did, I turned in the first one, second one. I'm on the third one. The? That one. This under. one? No, under it. Under that one. This one? Yes. Okay, so no wait. Oh wait, no. I did that one. Is it this one? No, I think it was the one you were talking about. It was more up. So I might have been this one. That one. Yes, this that one. one. Okay, just leave Vosotros alone. Don't even don't even do that part, because Vosotros is the. It like you know how ustedes means like you guys like more than one person. Yeah. Well, that's what vosotros means, but they only use vosotros in like Spain and some sections of Argentina. I don't even know that much about vosotros because yeah, it was just on there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I said, I didn't make this one. Um, <laughs> they don't even have usted and ustedes on here, which I don't like about this. But um, like I could have taught you guys vosotros, but it's weird and it's just more to learn and it's not really important. Like you'll very rarely hear it in the United States. So I was like, yeah, we're just not gonna. Even Miss. Yeah. When I. Wait, I'm sorry, you cut out. Oh gosh. If you're saying something, I can't hear you. Yeah, I, ca I can't hear you Fabian if you're saying something. I said, I said, uh, you can hear me now? Yes, I can now. Yep. All right. When I opened the assignment that was on the, uh, the screen just now, uh, when I open it in Google Docs, it's a different assignment. Like this one. Hold on. Okay. No, it's, it's not this one. Like, it's not like the same thing. Okay. Let me see. Let me open it with Google Docs and see what it brings up for me because I know sometimes it does that. Oh, I see what it did. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It makes it really weird. Um, okay. I see what it did. So, um, yeah. So, will it even leave me edit it? Okay. So, I'm just going to, so, like, what I'm going to do is, for this first section, do, and I'll actually, um, I will, if you want to wait to do this after class during my lab period, I'll like edit this so it's like right and then I'll like post that um, under the assignment so it makes more sense. Um, yeah, because I see what it did. Um, it just like formats it funny. So um, 
let me move this for one second because I can't see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it like moves everything around. I see what you mean. I can definitely, um, what I'll do, like pretty much what you're going to do is you're going to put the conjugations of Visitar here, Escuchar here, and Terminar here. All right. But um, I will, like I said, I'm going to work on like fixing this. Because I, I need to start um, making my own worksheets like I did. Um, like I, I did, I made my own worksheets last um, last term and uh, Ask Isaiah, it worked out a lot better. So um, I think that's just what I'm going to start to move on. This is like, I know like PDFs are hard to work with, so. So oh, yeah, I will work on this during my lab period if I don't have any students in. And then you can see what I'm doing here. So, um, but yeah, I'll work on that then. Um, it, it's, it's like, it's the same thing, right? Oh yeah, yeah, it's the exact same worksheet, but you see how like these are down here when on the sheet they were like up here. All right. For some reason, like when it opens on Google Docs, it sometimes formats things funny. And I don't know why it does that, but it does. All right. Yeah, it, it's the exact same assignment. It's just, it just opens it up funny. And I hate it. I'm that's that's all I needed to know. Why you turn that shit on? Yeah, it's, um, it's the same thing. It's just, um, it just formats it weird. But definitely, I will. Um, I'm definitely gonna. I'm. I'm gonna try to um, fix this and make it look like this, so it's easier. And then um, I'll just post like that same sheet under here because I think I can edit this. Yeah, I can, and I can add something in here. So I'll. I'll do that then, and then. Um, do you guys get a notification when I post something? I wasn't sure if you did or you didn't. Yeah. You do? Okay. Yeah, but I'll send out an email to both of you and just let you know that um, I formatted it correctly and uh, things like that. So it shouldn't take me very long, but um, I'll do it after class and I'll let you know when it's done. Um, and I also want to add in a note here. So um, I just added in a thing here. If you go back and look at um, the PowerPoint, so Isaiah, like you were giving me the answers with like the verb necessitar, which is completely fine, like it's correct. But um, I just wanted to show you like how they work with Panera plus K plus infinitive. So either one is correct. Um, but yeah, I mean, if that's the way you want to say it, that's fine. But um, yeah, either one's right. So um, I do have my next slide is on like the practice with the um, regular verbs. But let me go over um, the homework and stuff first. And then we'll, if we have time, we'll do it. So um, this looks really long, but it's really not. Um, so this is like the only one, and this is like with the two verb construction. So you only have to do this first section. Don't worry about two and don't worry about three. Um, because this is like your person, like it's saying, I like to talk on the phone. I like to play the guitar. And um, it's just showing you how gustar, which is a verb, and the verb after it are formed. So you can see in each one of these, gustar is conjugated, but the rest of them are in their infinitive form. It says hablar, tocar, estudiar, mirar, cantar, and hablar. So just take note of that. Um, and you're just gonna write, yes, it's true or no, it's false. So it says, I like to talk on the phone. So do you or don't you? And you just write yes or no. And uh, the second one is like, you're interviewing a partner. So obviously we can't do that. So we're not gonna do that. And then um, the second one is the third one is like if you would talk like on like your shared preferences, which obviously that's an interview too. So we're not going to do that. Uh, you could just do the first part. 
And um, I did add the translations in of the sentences they're on here. Um, but yeah, so just take like notice as to like how the verbs are formed. And that's pretty much just getting you familiar with it. So, and then I said, cierto is true, falso is false. I um, sent you the other word. Okay, yeah, I do see that I have two emails that are, I'll check it. And then this one is not due tomorrow. It's due, I think I have it set for Friday. Um, but this one's just, um, this is like with uh, the tenere plus K plus infinitive, which we went over today. Um, so you just have to read which one these and I put the translations in because I know you probably don't know a lot of these words but um, you'll just write yes or no it's like what do students have to do determine whether or not college students have to do the following activity in order to get good grades so you just write yes they do or no they don't so like the first one says students have to spend a lot of time on Facebook so obviously that's going to be no um, and it says change the detail to make the sentence true. You don't have to do that because I don't know why, because, but I don't really think that, um, I don't really think that that's like appropriate for like this level of Spanish because that's like kind of hard, but, um, but here's the sentence translations here. So you literally just have to say yes or no. So there's that and that's easy enough. Um, do you guys have any questions on this stuff or anything? No. No, you're okay? Yes. All right, good. So um, would you guys like to practice more with um, like the verb conjugation? I know some of, uh, what have you said yesterday that you weren't completely uh, comfortable with this, so? Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you mean page can't be found? Oh no, what have I done? Um, let me see. I think this is what I was gonna do. Yeah, this is what I was gonna do. So we'll just do like 10 questions for now. So, and then for each, and I actually really like this website, it works really well. But um, so they give you, and I put 10 questions in, you could do like up to 25, but um, they're gonna give you the verb that you're gonna use. And then the subject is usually in the beginning and you just tell me how to conjugate it based on who the subject is. So for the first one, you're gonna use the word practicar, which means to practice. So the sentence says, Juan y yo practiced all day. So how would you conjugate Practicar based on Juan y yo. Juan y yo. We get the AR ending back. So obviously it's a regular verb. So you're going to take the AR off, right? And then there's our stem. And Juan y yo. That's we, right? Us. Yeah. So right here. No, flow choice is we or us. So you add an almost to the end. So Juan y yo practicamos todo el día. So that means Juan and I practice all day. Does that make sense? Yeah, then the second one would be like, yo escribo. Yeah. Escribo. Well, yeah. Yeah, that would be right. Um, I write um, some books. So basically, uh, yeah, you're right. So it's an IR verb. We take the IR off. We're left with like escribe. And then yo is always the O at the end. So that's right. Yep. Same thing as with that one, yeah, is llamo. Uh-huh, yep. So, uh, yo llamo a sus niños por teléfono. So that's saying I call um, the children uh, by telephone, which that's like a very literal translation. But um, you remember it's an AR verb, take the AR off. We're left with L-L-A-M-O, I mean, a -A wow. L-L-A-M and then <laughs> add the O because it's in the yo form, okay? So then for layer, it says you- it's layers, right? Yep. With an A-S. With an E-S, because it's an E-R verb. E-S, yeah. Yep. So tu lees el periódico. So that means you read the newspaper. Take the E-R off, it's gone. We're left with L-E-E, -E, and then an E-S ending for two. Mm -hmm. Then five is tu compras. Yep. What's that say, the last word? Uh, unos regalitos. 
the so, two compras, uno regaladitos. Uh-huh, yep, so that means you buy some gift. Um, regalo means gift, but if you notice anything about Spanish, they add like ito at the end. So it's just like, it's a very, yeah. it's just a very regional thing, but it does mean uh, you buy some gifts. So you take, it's an AR verb, take the AR off, be left with C-O-M-P-R, and then add the A-S for two. Okay. For two, um, for the next one, we have Kubrier. And it says, you blank la bicicleta. So it's saying you cover the bike. You cover is A-S, but I don't know how to pronounce that word. It would be E-S, right? Because it's an I-R verb. Oh, yeah. I-R verb is E-S. Mm -hmm. And if it's an A-R. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, tu cubres la bicicleta. Okay. And then um, it's Juan y yo again, and we're using escuchar. Escuchamos. Uh-huh. Yep. So, Juan y yo escuchamos el viento antes de dormir. So that's like kind of saying Juan and I listen to the wind before going to sleep, which is awkward, but that. Um, for the that next one is trabaja. Yep. Maria trabaja demasiado. So that means Maria works too much. Um, AR verb, take AR off. We're left with T-R-A-B-A-J. And then we add the A because it's the she form. Maria, she. And then that one is tu abres la uh -huh. caja. Yep. You That's the last word, right? Caja. Caja, yep. And that means box. That's box, yeah. You open the box. ER verb, take the, ER, the IR off. Um, A, B, R, that's your stem. And then you add the ES for two. Yep. And then the last one is ustedes blank el vidrio. So that's saying like, you guys break the glass. So how would, what do you think? Ustedes rompen is A-N, right? It's E-N, remember, because it's an E-R verb. Oh, yeah, the E-R. If it's the E-R, it's E-N. There you go. I keep getting confused. That's okay. Yep. So, ustedes rompen el vidrio. The glass. Yep. So, and then we'll just submit it, but I'm pretty... Oh, yeah, of course. It's for 100%. So, um, so does that make a, a little bit more sense to you now, Isaiah? It actually helped me a little bit more understand, too. Because okay. at first I thought I could put AS until like mm -hmm. you showed me if it had an IR, then it said ES instead of AS. Yeah, if it's the only time you use like an AS is when it's like in the, it's an AR verb. For, um, okay. yeah, for ER and IR verbs, it's ES. Okay. okay. Does that make sense to you too, Fabian? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that you guys were good with that. And just remember, if you ever need like the charts for the endings, they're on like a bunch of PowerPoints. So they're all right there. And remember the IR ones are all the same as the ER except for the Nosotra form. So that's the only one that's different from ER. So that's what we did today. And then uh, we only have about 10 minutes left. So I figured that we'll go over what we're gonna do for tomorrow. So um, if you guys feel like you need more practice with verb conjugations, we can do them. If not, we'll move on. Um, we'll review the tener plus state plus infinitive, which um, I think that you guys got a good handle on that. Uh, we'll review the conjugation of tener since it's irregular. Um, they have like a section in the book next on like question words. So we'll pro I'll probably go through that. Sometimes, sometimes they're just different. Um, and possibly like forming questions, things like that, because sometimes the word order gets uh, like mixed up. It's just different, it's like an inverted subject, which we'll go over all that tomorrow. But, um, okay, let me stop recording here.